Green tomatoes are something that if you live in certain parts of the United States, if you live in the southern part of the United States, this is not weird whatsoever. And if you live in other parts of the world, like I think in India, uh, this is sometimes used in cooking. Also not very weird, but I imagine that other people watching may be raising an eyebrow over the idea of eating a tomato that is picked unripe. This is for everybody out there who is not from one of those areas where green tomatoes are eaten, and that includes me. Because I grew up in New York, and not New York City, I grew up in western New York, where uh, this is not a normal thing to find. You know, you're not gonna find a green tomato at the supermarket. So uh, I had never had a uh, fried green tomato or green tomato in a curry or anything like that until uh, more recently in my life. So uh, this is an interesting thing for me, definitely a weird one for me, and maybe it's a weird one for you. There are some people out there who think that eating green tomatoes is poison. There are two culprits involved, solanine, which is a compound that is found in different um, solanium species, uh, including potatoes, I believe, has solanine in it. So if you eat green potatoes, potatoes that are not fully matured, or the little berries on a potato plant, or the leaves of a potato plant, that stuff will mess you up. You don't want to eat that. It'll make you nauseous, it'll make you sick, it'll give you diarrhea. could actually kill you if you eat enough of it. Uh, some people say that solanine is also in tomatoes, and if you eat the wrong part of a tomato, like if you eat a lot of the leaves or the stems, that can mess you up, or if you eat unripe tomatoes, it can mess you up. However, I've also heard that that is not true, and there is not solanine in this, and instead there's something else that's related that has a similar uh, affliction on people, and that is something called tomatine. Tomatine is present in tomatoes, and there is more tomatine in a green tomato, especially if it's super, super unripe. Like if you grow tomato plant and you just start to get little fruits on there and you pick those and you eat them, you're probably going to get sick. Uh, if you let it mature more to when it gets to a level where it's just about to turn red but it's still green, uh, it's going to have less and you can eat it um, unless maybe you have uh, a sensitivity to it. Here's the inside by the way. It looks exactly like the inside of a tomato only green. Huh. It has tomatoey taste, but it is also uh, quite sour. It's more sour than a typical tomato. A regular tomato maybe has a little bit of tartness to it. Uh, maybe a 0.5 out of 10 on a regular tomato. This I would put at like a 4. It's not quite as sour as like an orange, but um, close. That tartness is more like the tartness you'd get from like, um, like a Granny Smith apple. It also has a green taste. You are tasting that chlorophyll in there. Very tomatoey. I wouldn't say this tastes bad, but I can just tell from eating the amount that I ate that if I eat this whole thing, it's going to give me a stomach ache. So, not going to. I think it's probably okay in small amounts, probably. Do some research, it's probably fine, uh, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to eat like an entire one of these. I am going to cook it. When you cook it, it's supposed to make it more palatable. Now, how am I going to cook it? Well. You hear that noise? That noise is the signal of a brand new segment that I will be featuring today called Will It Ketchup? Will It Ketchup is something I'm sure nobody asked for ever, but I will attempt to make ketchup out of green tomatoes and see how it compares to regular tomatoes. And if you think this is interesting, give me suggestions of other things you would like me to make ketchup out of. You want me to make ketchup out of uh, bitter gourd? You want me to make ketchup out of my t-shirt? 
So let me know. I'll make ketchup out of it. Uh, but I think this is probably a good place to start because this does taste very similar to regular tomatoes because it's green. It's going to maybe have a little bit more tartness to it or something. I don't know. Let's see what happens. So in order to make the ketchup, here's what you'll need. One pound of green tomatoes. One fourth cup of apple cider vinegar. A thing of spices. In here I've got, uh, let's see, there's three allspice berries, a pinch of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, fourth teaspoon of celery seeds, probably some other stuff. I've got uh, two cloves of garlic chopped, a little bit of ginger chopped, didn't measure it, one small hot chili pepper, and here's half of one medium onion, and three tablespoons of brown sugar. And you also will use water to taste. So the first thing you do is you get a pot on medium heat, put a splash of oil in there, and you're going to put all your aromatics in. So onion, chili, ginger, garlic. After this cooks for a little bit, these spices go in. So you can uh, wake those spices up and let this cook until the onions get translucent. Okay, we're getting uh, translucent for sure and a little brown. So I think I'm gonna start putting the other things in. That means throwing in the tomatoes the vinegar, and the sugar. That <clears throat> is also known as putting everything else in. So I'm going to cook this a little bit, integrate everything. Also going to chuck in a little bit of water. <coughs> oh, those peppers are really spicy. This might be spicier ketchup than than I was hoping, but it'll probably mellow out. And this is gonna cook for about uh, 30 minutes. Now here's the annoying thing. You gotta cook this and you gotta continuously stir it so it doesn't all burn. So the uh, best thing to do, what I like to do is I like to turn this on and then as it's cooking, I go through and I stir it a little bit. Then I clean up a little bit because I just made a big damn mess here. So I clean this up. Go back, stir a little bit, maybe sweep the floor, come back, stir a little bit more, put my laundry away, stir a little bit, and then before you know it, 30 minutes is gone. So that's how I do it. How you do it, I don't care. Yep, so that's about uh, 30 minutes of cooking, and this stuff is pungent, man. I've been like coughing and coughing. <laughs> as I stir it because um, that pepper in there is hot and it's uh, the onion and everything in here it's all like, very stinky so this thing's been pretty rough <coughs> so yeah so the next step is you take all this this is not ketchup guys this is pretty far from ketchup this is a, an immersion blender that's gonna go in there and Emerge. Actually, what's probably a good idea, I'm not sure if it'll fit, is I'm gonna put it inside this, this glass here. This guy goes in here. Make sure to put it inside first before you turn it on. And I'm gonna blend this until it's as smooth as I can possibly stand to make it. All right, yeah, so that's blended up pretty well. It took about maybe like two or three minutes to get it like this. Some people will stop right here and just use this as it is. Uh, me, I'm going to pass it through a fine mesh strainer. That way it's going to get all the seeds and little bits out. Otherwise, you're going to deal with like a very thick, chunky ketchup. And unless you like chunky style ketchup, I would recommend going through one of these. To aid in this process, I have a rubber spatula, so this is going to go into here a little bit at a time. 
and I'm just going to agitate it and kind of like push it through until it goes out the other side, which is extremely tedious. So if you're not making a YouTube video as you do this, I recommend listening to a book on tape. There it is. This is the strained out ketchup. If you're curious what is getting removed, that. Not a whole lot in there, just a little bit. Uh, a little bit got stuck on the bottom. I should probably have scraped that off. Eh, made a big mess. Great. This is a little thin, but it should thicken up a little bit. If it's like super, super thin, then what you want to do is you want to like turn your heat on and you want to cook it down to reduce a little bit. It's also probably a good time to check to make sure everything is to the right tastes. Now this is not going to taste as good as you want it to be. Oh, and by the way, don't put your finger into burning ketchup. That was probably a bad idea. Ouch. Um, let me just give this a quick try. Does it need any sugar? Does it need any salt? No. Tastes pretty good. I'm not going to say exactly what it tastes like yet because it's going to need to cool down for it to really uh, mature. You got to mature that ketchup. So right now it tastes uh, it tastes like the right sweetness and right tartness and everything. So uh, I'm happy with that. I'm going to let this cool down a little bit. That is not super pretty looking. It's more of a yellowish, brownish green. What would be a great idea is to take some green food coloring and put that in here, or put something green in the ketchup to make it even more green. Something that's got a lot of strong greenness, but not a lot of flavor, like, I don't know, some spinach or something. All right, it's been a few days and my green tomato ketchup has mellowed out. So let's give this a try, see how it compares to uh, regular ketchup. Uh, you may notice I've got some dye on me. That's because I just reviewed something that dyed my fingers purple. All right, just gonna try some just on its own. That tastes good. It tastes very similar to regular ketchup. Um, maybe a little bit different. I think the chili that I put in there was a bit hotter than I normally would use. It's not like hot sauce or anything, but there's a little bit more punch to it than ketchup would normally have. Um, I definitely taste the onion in there, but it seems about right. You know, I never really noticed that in regular ketchup before, but regular ketchup has onions in it. You know, or it has at least onion powder in it or something. And I'm definitely picking that up. Um, the sweetness on it is good. I would say that sweetness is about the same as regular ketchup. The tartness on that, maybe a little bit more. There's something, um, there's something different about it. It's got like a little bit more zip to it, a little bit more kapow or something, something like that. It's a little bit different than red ketchup. But this could be used in place of regular ketchup fairly evenly. It's got a little bit more of a punch to it, I think, but part of that is just that I made my own ketchup. So I think the main lesson here is that uh, give making ketchup a try. It takes a lot of work, ends up costing more money, but it's fun. And if you do it with green tomatoes, it's going to give a little bit of a subtle difference that you wouldn't get from just straight up, you know, store-bought Roma tomatoes or something. So I think I'm going to do this again, guys. If you can think of something that you would like me to make ketchup out of, let me know in the description below, and uh, I'll see if I can put something together for you. Until then, guys, I'll see you next time. I want to give a special shout out to AltPod and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how this channel happens, is how I can afford to do all the things that I do. So if you want to help me out by supporting the channel and getting some bonuses along the way, check out the description. I also have these shirts for sale. Those are in the description as well. See you next time. Bye.